um, since I'm going to record this, uh, so I'm going to record it so that I can post it up for you guys to refer back to if you need to or want to. <clears throat> and um, since I'm re re uh, recording it, I'm going to flash through all the problems and the answers um, just so that you can have them as reference possibly if, you, if, if it you know, may turn out to be a good thing. So I'm going to flash through each one. That way, if you ever want to go back on the video and pause it and look at it, you can. And then we'll go back uh, more slowly individually. So just give me a second. Um, let me flash through these. Uh, it means I'm going to have to X out all these shade screens I have. All right, these first 15 we already talked about in class. Sounds like somebody else just got on. That must be Andrew. Um, so Andrew, I'm just um, clicking through all the problems and the answers first because I'm recording this and then I'm going to post it. That way, if anybody wants to refer back to any of this, um, they can pause the video instead of watch, if, you know, thinking of it as a time saver possibly instead of watching the whole video or skipping, you know, trying to find the spot that you're looking for. <clears throat> yeah just wait uh, Nathan's asking yeah just wait a second Rosamond Tom Rosamond's not Nathan I'm going to, somebody's asking where you're going to post the video. I'm going to post the video, you know, on the chapter four lesson page, you know, where you went, uh, you know, where you went to print up the semester exam, the practice the semester exam, it'll be, it'll be there with it. Um, Jordan, is that five question mark? Is that to me? Okay. Yeah, no, there's, there's a section, you know, where you printed up the practice test. It's uh, titled semester exam something or other. Um, and I'm not sure what you're referring to as chap about chapter five. I haven't made the submission for chapter five yet. Okay. And then I've got some duplicates I found. Um, so for example, you'll see 62 crossed out. 63 is a duplicate. Um, actually, I don't think this should, I need to go back to this. I don't think these are duplicates, 64. And I think that's a duplicate. All right, so let's go back to the beginning. Um, and again, you know, we'll go over this, you know, stop me if you have any questions. Um, and, uh, you know, the test isn't until Tuesday. So even after this, if there's some, t you know, necessary communication between us with questions or whatever, we'll, we still have some time, um, emails or something else. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, end the, uh, the uh, non-related non uh, comments on the chat box. Okay, so we're looking at number one. Oh, hold on, I need to turn on my tablet.
All right, so number one, angle side of angle. Okay, I think you guys are good with that. Number two, supplementary, two angles that, uh, you know, who have at a, whose sum of the measures is 180. Oh yeah, that's right, thank you, uh, Jordan. We've already done up to 15. All right, look at number 16. How many got that right? Um, type a Y if you got that one right. Okay, good. Um, so what you gotta take into account, you know, you just gotta read it carefully that we're fencing in. So we have the garden, was it the garden and then the path around the garden? Uh, let's see, garden measures has a path around it. So this would be the garden that measures 50 by 53. And then you've got a path around it that has a width of three feet. So you think about it, you've got, you know, three feet going this way and you also have three feet going this way. So each side is gonna extend out six feet. So perimeter is the length around something. So, you know, now I'm now going from 53 to 56, 59 feet uh, in one dimension and 56 feet in the other dimension. So we have 59 plus 59 plus 56 plus 56 is equal to 230. Okay, so that you're just practicing using the angle addition postulate here. Um, this one's 37, angle AOC is 66. So if I take 37 from 66, I've got what they're asking for, angle AOB, which is 29. Okay, name the smallest angle. This comes from chapter five that we're, finish, that we're finishing up. Remember the smallest angle is gonna be opposite the shortest side. So that would be angle A. All right, list the sides in order from shortest to longest, not longest to shortest. Make sure you're paying attention, shortest to longest. So again, the shortest side is gonna be opposite the smallest angle. Here's the smallest angle, so JK is gonna be the shortest side and so forth. Okay, find the value of X, number 20. Um, it's given that angle B is congruent to angle A and C to F. So remember, if two angles in one triangle are congruent to two in another, that third pair has to be congruent as well. So angle A and D are uh, congruent. So that allows me to make an equation, x plus 50 is equal to 75, and with an equation, I can do what they're asking, solve for x. What is the converse of the following conditional? So the converse, is the reverse of your conditional. So remember with a converse, your if becomes your then and your then becomes your if. We're just switching the order. So number 21 would be A. <clears throat> Contrapositive. Okay. Anybody else in my lag? Anybody else here in the lag? How's my sound for everybody else? Everybody else sound good? All right, Jordan, it might be Bright House's fault. <laughs> Jordan commented probably. Bad advertisement for Bright House. One of the reasons I said that is fresh on my mind, I guess, because I know you were having trouble with them before. All right, um, what is the contrapositive uh, of the given statement? So remember the contrapositive is the reverse of the inverse. Um, we looked at it a different way, different ways. Um, you know, the converse of the inverse uh, and uh, so forth. So remember inverse, you're negating. So for example, I could say if M is the midpoint of segment CD, then CM is equal to MD. The inverse would be if M is not the midpoint of segment CD, then CM does not equal MD. That would be the inverse. 
So the contrapositive, I would just reverse the statements. This would become the if, and this would become the then. So if CM does not equal MD, you got the slash through the equal sign, then M is not the midpoint of segment CD. So that's the contrapositive. Anybody get that one right? Who got that one right? Yes, sir. Uh, put a, type a Y if you got that right. Okay, some, some people have tr trouble with a contrapositive. All right, we got two two people got it right that are saying at least. All right, number 23 in the figure below. Well, since I only got two responses, any questions on 21 or 22? Or right, any of them, any questions on anything we've covered? All right, we're all good. Okay, number 23, L is parallel to N, R is a transversal, which is not necessarily true. Read your problem carefully, not necessarily true. So seven and four do not have any type of angle pair relationship that we've identified. So one of them could be acute, one of them could be obtuse. Um, we don't necessarily know that seven and four are congruent. Which is false, okay. Um, D, D, E, B, and uh, CBE um, are corresponding angles. That's not true. All right, C, CBE and DEB are actually consecutive interior, right? Okay. Okay, eight and two are actually all. I'm looking at a, a comment on the on the chat box. Eight and two are actually alternate exterior angles. And so, with transversals uh, or parallels and a transversal, alternate exterior angles are congruent. Okay, here's another problem with um, a regular polygon. Okay, we got into this in class. Um, realizing I'm going to keep them on the test, but I realized we're not, we didn't really cover this at any point this year. Um, but, um, you know, we need to know it and it's not that difficult. So did anybody get this right? Number 25. Again, this is kind of new to you. Um, okay. We got a few people that got that one right. Excellent. Um, all right, so the key here, first of all, is recognizing that we're dealing with a regular hexagon. We're asking, what is the measure of each interior angle? Okay, so these are the uh, interior angles. We have six interior angles. Okay, the key again is, uh, you know, recognizing we're talking about a regular and what the definition of. So remember, a regular polygon, all sides are congruent. And then all interior angles are congruent, whether it's a hexagon, a pentagon, an octagon, or whatever. Okay. So remember, I showed you. Okay, the the the, the expression n minus two times one eighty gives you the sum of the angles of any polygon. Doesn't matter if it's regular or not. Any polygon where n represents the number of sides. So in this case, we have a six-sided polygon. So I substitute n with six. Then I follow my order of operations. Six minus two is four times 180 is 720. So all six angles of any hexagon, whether it's con, uh, you know, if it's a, if it's a um, convex polygon, whether it's regular or not, adds up to 720. Okay. So, but that's not what they're after. They're ask, asking of each. What's the measure of each? Well, since I know all six are equal in measure, I can take that total of 720 degrees and I can divide it up into six equal parts. So 720 divided by six is 120. Any questions on that one? Okay, so the 720 comes from finding the 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 sum of uh of the measure of each one of 
the six angles. So I've got six angles that are formed interior angles of, of a hexagon. If it was an octagon, eight sides would be eight angles. Okay, so we have six angles in this case. So again, you have the expression n minus two times 180. That gives you the sum of the angles of any polygon, whether it's eight sides, nine sides, and so forth. Okay, and then I see you, you're putting okay. So then just substitute, the n is the number of sides, so whatever type of polygon you're dealing with, substitute n with the number of sides, and then follow your operations. Yep, triangle's a polygon as well, so that would work for a triangle. Three minus two is one, one times 180 is 180. And we know the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180. Oh, Jonathan's saying that he used uh, triangles because remember we also saw that if we start with one uh, vertex and from that one vertex connect uh, diagonals or segments to all the other vertices, then we have two less triangles than we do sides and all the angles of the triangles end up in the angles of the hexagon. So 180 plus 180 plus 180 plus 180 is 720. Number six, which side lengths allow you to construct a triangle? So we know that the sum of two side lengths has to be greater than the third side length. So what we have to do is just test and Ni nicely, it worked out that A, if we started with A and tested it first, we wouldn't have to go any further. Okay, so four plus one, you know, what are all the, there's three possible combinations of adding two side links of two of the three. So four plus one is greater than, uh, whoops. I did something wrong here, didn't I? Hold on. This is surprising. Four plus one is not greater than nine, so A is not right. So if somebody said C, let's, let's test C. Yeah, A is wrong. So let's test C. All right, so is nine plus 12 greater than 15? Yes, it is, 21 is greater than 15. Um, is 12 plus 15 greater than nine? Yes, it is. And is nine plus 15 greater than 12? Yes, it is. So thank you, whoever said that, uh, Jonathan, right? Okay, I'm just reading people's comments. So I think we've everybody's straightened out, right? Everybody good with that? Somebody said about the different sum thing. Now that's that's when you're looking for a range of possible side links. Okay, take a look at number 27. We didn't discuss what the hinge theorem is, but I've given you enough information to answer this question. Who, who got this one right without just guessing? Anybody get number 27 right? Okay, good. Um, since, and I think maybe we have talked about it, I don't know, but since these two sides are congruent, we got two pairs of corresponding sides. Since these are congruent, um, then we can make a conclusion about the sides opposite, okay? The, 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 the one with the smaller angle is going to be the shorter side. And so that's what the hinge theorem is. Um, okay, so since these two sides, since AE is congruent to DE and BC to BF, I can look at the angle measurements formed by those sides and make a conclusion about the length of the side opposite, okay? So looking at C, DF, they're saying DF is greater than AC. That's correct because 75 degree angle is greater than a 70 degree angle. No, Jonathan, that's what I was just saying. We didn't, I didn't introduce the hinge theorem to you but we did look at the fact that the, the, you know, the longer side is going to be opposite the, the larger angle. And so we just add a little bit of uh, to that by saying, okay, since these sides are congruent, then so, cause if let's say BC was longer than EF, then I couldn't necessarily conclude that AC was greater than DF. But since these corresponding sides are congruent, I can make that conclusion. <coughs> So if it comes up on the, on the exam, semester exam, that term hinge theorem, 
you're just going to have to remember what we're talking about here. Okay, using the midpoint formula. And if you guys remind me, I will put up on the board, I'll put up the midpoint formula, I'll put up the distance formula, um, I'll put up the slope formula uh, on the board for you to refer to. Um, can't think of any other ones that I would put up there. Midpoint. Uh, Isn't there like an endpoint formula too? Well, you got your distance formula, the length between the endpoints. <clears throat> I thought there was another one though. I can't remember what it is. But I'll definitely put up distance, midpoint, and um, slope. All right. And uh, if there's something else you think of that you wonder if it if it, if I'll give it to you um, as a reference, then you know just ask. <laughs> Will you give me the the test answers? <laughs> no, you're going to give me the test answers. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Did you realize that you put the answers to chapter five on the PDF document? The test? Yes, sir. No, I did not. I didn't use them, but I noticed that the answers were there. And I just left them on the printer. Oh, okay. Thank you for letting me know. You should have just let me know that independently, though, but thank you. <laughs> I'll have to change that. All yeah. right. Um, Jordan says, how much time do we have? So I'm going to be sending out an email. We've, we've talked about it in class, but I want to make sure your parents know. So I'm canceling my, the algebra class we will not have on Tuesday. So you're going to have two hour block. Okay. And if you remember, we said there's going to be a vocabulary part a vocabulary and a proof part where you're able to use your notebook. And so I'm hoping that won't take any more than 30 minutes and then we'll close our notebooks up and we'll, we'll do the rest of the test. So you have about two hours, roughly. All right. Um, number 31, what other information do you need in order to prove the triangles are congruent by side angle side? Um, so if, you know, we, we, we know that AC is congruent to itself. So if I knew that AB and AD were congruent, I could use side angle side. Who's Little Barry Finn? Are you somebody reading Huckleberry Finn or something? Are you reading Huck Finn? <laughs> All right, so we done somebody asked me to go back, so I went back one more. All right, Jonathan, I'm not sure what you're talking. Are you are you referencing something to me? Which one? Why is it A? Which one? Okay, did we go? Okay, this is what we're on now. Okay, I must have actually skipped one. All right, so 29. Okay, that you know, DF is congruent to itself, so angle side angle, angle side angle would prove that these two triangles are congruent. All right, number 30, can you use the angle side angle postulate, the angle angle side theorem, or both to prove the triangle congruent? Okay, so maybe so. Let's see. So we've got angle angle side, we recognize vertical angles are congruent, so that's angle angle side. And angle side, oh, okay, yeah, you could. Um, because if I know that these two angles are congruent to these angles, then I know that the third pair is congruent as well. Okay, so 
That is true. All right, the thing that stinks about me going forward or me flashing through all the correct answers uh, at the beginning, we've, we've uh, missed two. Let me try to write that down. Anybody remember what other number was that I got wrong? It was number 30 and what? Let's see, what was that other one? It was 26. Yeah, 26. Okay, thanks. Okay, 31, angle, side, angle. We already looked at I actually skipped one. So segment AB congruent AD, that would be side, angle, side. That would allow us to use side, angle, side, I mean. Okay, number 32 is B. Number 33 is A. Take a look at either one of those and see if you have any questions on either one of those. Okay, if, if AD is congruent to BC, then that allows us to use side angle side. All right, distance formula. Okay, so the radius goes from the origin to, you know, point A. Uh, so the nice thing about this is, you know, one of our endpoints is zero, zero, so that makes the arithmetic easy. So you should have gotten five. The length of the radius is five. Ooh, what's going on here? I don't even see the correct answer then because it's asking for the diameter. Uh, you have to hold on, on on that. We've only got 10 minutes left. So number eight, you'll have to look at um, on the video, Jonathan. Somebody, first of all, I don't even see the correct answer on here. What is the length of the diameter? Okay, so the radius is five. Somebody's asking, um, isn't it obvious? I don't know how that's obvious, but the radius is five, so we would double that for the diameter, which is 10. Okay, so I need to make a, a note on 34 as well. There's no correct answer choice. All right. Count the units. Well, it's not a vertical or horizontal. Let's see, one, two, three, four, over. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're saying, Jake. Yes, it's 10, because I'm asking for the diameter. This is the radius here, five. Okay, so if I use the distance formula, you know, starting with the origin from here to here, that I find that the radius is five units, but they're asking for the diameter, which is twice the radius. So I would have to double five and it would have to be 10. Okay. All right, and so that's that. Well, go out there then. I can't do it. Mailman's here. I think he's delivering my airsoft. I got a new airsoft gun. Oh, Jake, that is so smart. I see what you're saying. That's too easy. Okay, what he's saying is, you know, the radius is the same anywhere. So, um, 
you know, from here to here on the, on the X axis, um, you know, yet one, whoops, one, two, three, four, five units long. So you could just double that. Okay. Um, so just be careful though, because, uh, you know, on the test, on the exam, it may not, the center may not be at the origin. Okay. It may be at a different location. All right. Good job, Jake. Okay. So on the test, I might have it at, you know, over here or something. Okay, remember inverse, you negate. So if I do not study becomes if I do study, then I am failing becomes then I am not failing. Okay, so make sure you can keep all those straight, converse, inverse, contrapositive, and so forth. 36, which statement is logically equivalent to the conditional statement? Okay, so remember logically equivalent, that means they're both either both true or both false. So the way I told you to remember that is remember the verses are logically equivalent. They're either both true or both false. Okay, so converse and inverse are logically equivalent. And then that leaves you with the other remaining two as being logically equivalent. Your original conditional and your contrapositive. Okay, so I've got my original conditional, so that means the contra, I'm going to have to look for the contrapositive, and that contrapositive is going to be logically equivalent. 35 was B. Thirty-seven. Okay, we're using what we referred to in that other problem as the hinge theorem again. Okay, because notice A, B, and C, B are congruent, I, H, and G, you know, they're got corresponding congruent sides. So 56 is less, is greater than 55, so A, C is going to be a little bit longer than segment G, I. Okay, number 38, transversal through parallels. So that, remember what we said earlier on a different problem, alternate exterior angles are congruent. So this angle is 38. I know all three make 180, so that I can find angle Q. Okay, we're looking for the measure of angle P. So we've got parallel, 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 parallel. So these course, this corresponding angle is going to be congruent, so it's going to be 130. And then these two sides are parallel, so we've got consecutive interior angles going to be supplementary. So 130 from 180 gives me 50 for angle P. All right, number 40, that was a fun one. Um, you got to be able to just separate in your mind some parallels. We've got parallels right here. Uh, so you've got corresponding angles. All right, so this angle here is 74 degrees. So that angle is also 74 degrees. So X minus 3 has to equal 74. That means X is equal to 77. Okay. And... Uh, so, yeah, we've got about uh, three minutes left. So we're going to have to come up with an alternative plan to get the rest of this covered. Um, so notice here, if I um, erase this part now, so now we've got three angles that make up 180. All right, so I could take the 74 and the 41 away from 180, and that's what Y plus 8 is going to be. Okay, so y plus 8 is going to be, and the way I'm showing it is 74 plus 41 plus y plus 8, these three angles equals 180. When I solve for y, I've got 57. So we'll, what we'll probably have to do, people are asking what we're going to do since we're not finished. What we're probably going to have to do is just, um, I can... I'll put a PDF of the whole thing up. You guys can look at that and then we can just kind of, I can hear from you or get in touch with you guys and see if we need to meet again on Monday. I don't have time for a second class today. Um, so when we're done here, I'll uh, put a PDF of, of all this on that you can look at statically and then we can evaluate as far as if we want to meet again on Monday. 
So I'll just keep going and we'll get cut off in about two minutes. Slope of the line, you could either count it or you can use the slope formula. Okay, since this is multiple choice, again, you can look for the correct y-intercept, negative one, and look for the correct slope. It's negative, um, so it should be going down left to right. Um, and it goes through negative one, so it could be on either one of these two, and then I can check my slope. I can use the slope formula, or I can count. Forty-two was D. Okay, so remember when we're going to write an equation in slope-intercept form, we need two things. We need M and B. M is given to us, negative five. And so I just need to um, plug my uh, m into, you know, into y equals mx plus b. I put in 1 for y, negative 10 for x, negative 5 for m, and I solve for b. Okay, one minute left. Number 45 is d. And there's 46 and 47. Using what we learned about an exterior angle, well, actually, right here, with the, you know, these two together um, equal 180. Notice we have an isosceles triangle, so this is also 3x minus 50. So I could say 3x minus 50 plus 7x is equal to 180. Okay, so we're not necessarily using the exterior angle theorem there. Okay, so you guys have a good weekend. And uh, be in touch with me if you have any questions.